Jay, do you want to start and then we'll work through Where to cut and stuff like that is, is your question? Well, what, I mean, what kind of strategic plan? I mean, well, when, you, when you're in business and you I have do a think that, that doesn't balance, you strategically right. get together and you say, we have to fix this. How are we going to do this? And it involves making some really, really, really difficult decisions. I totally get that. Okay. So but are there any obvious places to cut? Because we've got any? obvious places to raise taxes. So where are the we've obvious, got obvious places? <laughs> And um, are there obvious places to cut? I don't um, have enough uh, background on that, on the best areas to cut, so I'm going to pass on that one. But I know that there are definite areas that we need. We probably need to do cuts across the board, and everybody needs to bite the bullet a little bit to save money. So that would be the best, finding most effective areas across the board, because everybody comes and whines about wanting more money and stuff like that. Um, you know, we need this, we need this, but we got to, you know, buckle down. We're spoiled as a nation. We're, we're spoiled as a country. We want everything, and we need to make cuts across the board. I went out charter fishing yesterday, and there's a young first mate who uh, is uh, just graduating from uh, the Duluth schools. And he told me that last year uh, his smallest class was 36 kids, uh, up to 41 mm -hmm. kids. Hey, that's a cut from, from recent years. We're, we're cramming more kids in classrooms. It means we don't have to have as many teachers. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, the, the school system is doing its part to make sure that it lives uh, under a tight budget. Uh, are there going to be uh, some negative consequences of our cramming more kids in classrooms? Are kids going to start getting left behind? Yeah, I think that's probably the case. Um, I think that we have been under a budget cutting uh, regime for about 10 or 15 years, and there have been lots of cuts. Uh, I think our universities, state universities, uh, are suffering as a result of uh, lots of trimming. But you know, probably the best way to make sensible cuts is to say, you got less money. You figure out what's really important. In the case of the school district, they've decided they can put more kids in classrooms. That's, that's their solution. And I'm always troubled when the state legislature uh, 201 people squabbling about how they're going to get somebody else to pay for the projects in their districts come up with a state budget, uh, how they're going to uh, reduce things in some intelligent way when the, the best thing is to tell somebody that you think has too much money, we think you have too much money, start making cuts. Well, the universities have made lots of cuts. Um, I, I, I suspect that we're just going to be in a, a taxing mode to make up for this budget uh, uh, deficit that we have, and we just have to get reconciled to it and hope that whatever taxes may get raised are not going to do more damage in the long run. Right. Well, I don't know that I agree Thank that we're going to be in a, in a taxing mode. I think legislators who have been at the Capitol know that, and Tom Bach probably says this best, yeah. I mean, we can take every tax that's been proposed and put it on the table and it'll get about half of the deficit covered. We can take every cut that's been talked about in the last couple of years and it'll get about half of the deficit covered. I mean, Jen, to, to your question, um, the challenge is when you take health care, K-12, and higher education and add them up, they're about two-thirds of the general fund. And, you know, this was never as clear to me as last summer when I volunteered at the State Fair and we do a little survey. And people filled out the survey and the question was, what would you not cut? What would you protect in the state budget? Number one, education. Number two, health care. So we have this disconnect between people not really getting the fundamentals of the budget. And we have made cuts, and Harry referred to that. You know, in the last three years, we've gone from a general fund that was $35 billion to a general fund that's $30 billion. That's a real cut of $5 billion in the state general fund. And there's going to be more. Um, and, and to Harry's point, I think there's, there's validity there in trying to figure out, you know, we do things like the, the state grant program in higher education. It's traditionally gone pretty much all the way up to wealthy students have gotten some form of state grant. And the, the, the legislature has not had the political will to say, we ought to means test that. If, we really want, if we're really trying to help low-income students go to college, we probably need to narrow the scope of who's getting that state grant. But a lot of people get it, and then a lot of people complain that they're not getting it anymore. So there was actually, for the first time in the state's history, a, a, an actual adjustment in that, and people got less money in the state grant program. But there's going to have to be more. Mm -hmm. yeah, question. Any questions out there first? We're talking big business here with health care and education, but you know, as a chamber with 80% small business, and being a small business owner myself, what happens when you pass down the sales tax and property taxes to small business owners is that the people that eat it are the customers, 
or they're closing their doors. And as the director of retention, I hear that all the time. We just can't do it. We can't afford that membership because of that tax is being passed along. And that's just a statement in general. I mean, we could talk biz big business all we want, but I think the backbone of this is a lot of small business, and a lot of small business is hurting because of what's been passed on to them for expenses. And I, I have a question that adds on to your question. Okay. How do we get more for less, whether it's in the case of education <laughs> or state employees? You know, California is a great example. Their pension system is run away, and they, they really are heading for bankruptcy. And Minnesota is not far behind in some of those areas. We've been overly optimistic in our investments for retirements. We've kind of overpromised in some areas. You can retire early and with, with a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of bang for your retirement. How do we change some of that? I mean, the private sector dealt with it 20 years ago with 401s. Is the state willing to go that direction? Are you guys willing to go that direction? Well, one of the things that I was very pleased with when I was on the school board was uh, a new accounting principle that swept the nation, which basically said, you take a look at what your long-term cost projections are going to be based upon what you're doing now. So you're more realistic. I, I believe in that, that kind of realism. Okay. Uh, another thing that uh, has happened uh, and is continuing to happen, you hear a lot of people, especially in the union movement, uh, complain about it, is that uh, uh, things like retirement be benefits are, are no longer guaranteed based upon what the taxpayers are, are hopefully going to be able to, uh, to contribute to the government, the pension programs, but uh, on what the employees are able to accumulate in their lifetimes, which is, of course, quite a bit smaller if you're going to try to build your, your, uh, your retirement based upon the money that you've got and, and husbanding that carefully as opposed to uh, an unwritten blank check from taxpayers in the future. Those things are, are happening, and they're the kinds of things that need to happen. We have to look into the future. And if we force state legislators and through the laws uh, to abide by these kinds of limitations and sensible future projections, we'll be a lot better off. Okay, so you support those kinds of reforms at the state level? Well, uh, as, opposed, as opposed to uh, making promises about what my grandchildren will pay to take care of things I want now, you damn right. Okay. Well, I mean, Andy, to your question, I, I think the good news, if we can phrase it that way, is the legislature in Minnesota actually turns over fairly frequently. And there is a huge number of people right now, and, and something like two-thirds of the candidates running in this year's election are coming out of local government backgrounds. So you've got a, an infusion of people into the legislature who've dealt with these issues. Okay. When I was on the council, rene we, renegotiated, <laughs> we renegotiated all of the union contracts to go from defined benefit to defined contribution. Defined benefit's better, sure, if you're the employee, but the, rea the reality was our, our budgets in the ongoing uh, future couldn't support that, so we went to the defined contribution. Okay. Jay or Karen? Well, I, I think it comes back to, to the whole issue of priorities and having to have that discussion and how, how do you do that. And it's going to be extremely difficult it to will do be, that. Yeah. Um, but we, we need to have people who are going to be reasonable to have that conversation. Um, you know, we laid off 200 employees in the city of Duluth and we are doing just as much with less. Um, so government does know how to do that. But there's a, there's a point where you can't cut anymore. You know, and the city of Duluth is at that point, in my opinion. So we need to look at that and how that model comes over, like Roger was talking about negotiating contracts. Um, that's something the executive will have to do. The legislature needs to know and decide how they're going to spend their money and what the priorities are. Um, and that's going to depend on who's in the, in the governor's mansion, part of that. But also it's going to depend on, on new legislators saying, we need to set some priorities. And what just always has been isn't going to be anymore. We just can't do it. That's reality. To yeah. answer to answer the well, question, let Jay go first and then throw in some stuff here. In regards to the whole small businesses, I think we really need to you know loosen up some of the requirements on small businesses because they struggle and they are the foundation of our economy. You say eighty percent of the businesses in the chamber are small businesses, and finding ways to um, help that because a lot of employees and feel and I, I was an employee for a while you you have this sense of entitlement and they have no clue what the challenges that the small business owner goes through in just their the risk that they take and responsibilities that they have and finding ways to help people understand that um, I think is like I say educating people more about this whole spirit of entrepreneurialism I think is a helpful way to do that because there's this big sense of entitlement um, 
and we really need to find ways for people to understand that you need to take more responsibility. So all of us across the board need to take more responsibility. Yeah.